Revelation chapter 20. reminiscing on the Lord just um, how to do this to work it may make sense to some and some it may not but it's alright God knows all things it says in Revelation chapter 20 I want to read um, verses 11 and 12 and then I want to go to the book of Acts it says and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from those whose faces the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was no found place for them. And I saw the dead, the small and the great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. And these dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. I want to read one more scripture. There will be in Acts chapter 22, verses 16. You can write it down, or I'll give you a second to scroll there. <clears throat> Acts 22, verse 16. Because a lot of people want to know why we do what we do. <clears throat> I know a lot of times it's preached Acts 2 38, but there's a reason why we get baptized. This is Paul preaching. And he says in verse 15, For thou shalt be his witnesses unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Tripp has made a decision today, but I want everybody to listen to him. It's very important. He wants to make sure that his name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Very important that we all understand that. And I want to bring it from Genesis real quick. I won't, I won't bore you down, but I want to bring you from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Because they've come at a time when the Lord is coming, and he's going to look to see if that name is applied to your life. And he has chosen this day, amen, to make sure that he has a covenant with the Lord. Amen. Let's just pray. Lord God, as we come before you, Lord, I ask you one more time, God, to let the anointing of the Holy Ghost be in this place, Lord God, and on this word, Lord. Lord, I would ask you, Lord God, just to move in such a way, Lord God, that they be understanding today, Lord, of who you are and what you are, Lord, the importance, Lord, that you made us all free moral agents. We can pick and choose whether we serve you or not. We can have the desire to have your name or not, Lord God, but I know there's a day that's coming, Lord, that you'll be seeking out those, Lord God, that's been baptized in your name that has that blood applied to their life, Lord. And Lord, today in a verbal voice, I want to thank you, Lord, that you stirred my grandson, Lord God, that he wants his name make sure that it is written that when the book is over, that they can find Trip Zeke Allen, Lord God, in, in, in the Word, Lord God, in that Lamb's book of life, Lord God. It can be found, uh, Lord God, that he stood among many, Lord God, and said, I'm going to take that name. Lord, and I thank you so much for it today, Jesus. Lord, just help us through this. Hallelujah. Mighty God, you can be seated if you can. But a lot of times the argument is that when man was, and I'll just be real brief with it, a lot of, a lot of arguments that you see that People say, well, I didn't ask to be born, so why should I have to serve God? And these type of things in the defense of not wanting to, to serve the Lord and why, what's the need of it. And, and the most important thing that I, I want to I wanna share today is God is God and God does what he wants to. And his, his, whole import, his, his whole thing that he wanted to do, amen, is have a relationship with the human race. That's why that we were created for his for his liking, for his for pleasure. That's what he, we were created for. Amen. And even from day one, when he told man to, to create, to, 
excuse me, that when he created man and woman and he told them to multiply, amen, it was for us, for his enjoyment, for humanity. And as we look through the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, he's always, he has always, that has always been his thing, is to save humanity. It was never once, amen, Sister Karen, for him to judge mankind and destroy all of mankind. That was never, was never his intent to start with. His intent was for the garden to be here. His intent was to have a soul relationship with Adam and Eve, but we know the story that them being in sin, so he kicks them out. But even at that point of being kicked out, he still made a covenant with man. They still made sacrifices. We know that Cain and Abel, we know the story that Cain killed Abel, but yet they were making sacrifices, amen, to keep a relationship between man and God. That was the purpose of it. We can go to Noah's time. Noah preached 120 years for repentance. No repentance, judgment comes. Same thing that's going to happen night to day, amen. If people don't repent, judgment is coming, amen. I just read it to you in Revelation. There's going to come a time that a book's going to be opened, Sister Karen, and every name is going to be spoken that's in that book. Amen. And if your name is not in that book, amen, we're going to be judged according to the works that we have done. And that's the most thing that I, I can share today. I want to make sure Amen, that my name is in the book. Amen. Amen, when Tripp asked me to baptize him because he said he didn't want to go to hell and it had been playing on his mind, I'm telling you, amen, that's just rejoicing in, in, in my heart. Amen, that he wants to have a relationship with the Lord and understands from this day forward, amen, that he can have, amen, from the Lord. Amen, and it's so important. But as I, I wrote many things down and I just... We like to share. I don't know if you read your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, it's okay. You should read it. But even I wanted to to to, to bring the point of, of of Moses and Exodus being the deliverer of of the people of Israel when they were in bondage. They still had a paschal lamb. They still had a sacrifice. They still had blood yes. applied to the door again. God still. Even bringing the death angel warned the people, amen, smear the blood, I'm yes. coming to judge, amen. And yeah. even today, that's where we end. When we get into Joshua, amen, Joshua led the people, I mean, again, God's not against his people because he led them to the milk, a land of milk and honey. That was the intent, amen, for them to go to the milk, a land of milk and honey, amen. He wanted a covenant. They had to be circumcised. They set up monuments to say that we crossed the Jordan, that we own this land now. All the time, God wants to bless his people. It ain't the point of being destroyed. It's about having a covenant with the Lord. That's the most important thing. You get to judges, amen, there's Samson, there's Deborah, there's Gideon, there's Japheth, they all, God had always sent somebody, amen, to judge his people, to keep them in line. It's always been that way. God has never had the intent to humanity to be grown here for him to destroy it and laugh about it. That was never the intent. The intent was to have a covenant with him. And he said, you can't have a covenant unless you have righteousness. You can't have righteousness unless you be holy. You can't be holy unless you obey my word. So that's what we have to do here today. We have to be baptized, amen, in that covenant, in his name. And as we move on, even David said, you know, in Psalms, Sister Karen, for the walk, the to search me and wash me white as snow. David wanted yes. a, a relationship with the Lord. So it's all through even the Old Testament, amen, even the, the old prophets, the major and minor prophets, they all stood before Israel, what we call the church today, and they always was trying to, to, to reconcile them between them and God. They always tried to bring correct the criticism to them, bring them to a path that they needed to be, that God would not bring anger against them and destroy them. But we know what the Bible teaches us of all the idols and all the other gods that they would worship, that it, yeah, it did anger God because God always gave. God always provided. God always done for the children of Israel. Yeah. So yes, they is judgment. Yes, they is. And today, as we look at this, as ugly as it may seem and it may seem, sink your heart, but one day when he comes, one day when you die, you can say, well, how do you know this? Trust me, if we could bring everybody back from the dead today, right. I promise you, the ones that's not Amen. baptized, I promise you, they'd stand before you today and say, if there's anything I can tell you, amen, is get washed. That's what yeah. I can tell you that. But anyway, when you get into the, 
New Testament. This is the most important thing because there's a lot of controversy on it. But the Lord made the most easiest thing that we could have done. Sister Karen is just repenting. Wow. That is the most easiest thing that I know that we can do today is repent. Amen. I don't have to go find me a bull and slaughter it before a Amen. priest. No. Amen. To get my sins wrong just one year. I can repent and have my sins remitted. I can, have, yes. I can go down there to that river and have my sins washed away. The Bible says in Psalms of, uh, 103 that it is as far as the east is from the west. When we repent and we get those sins washed away, and that's far. Right? That's pretty far. It never yes, it east and west never connect. If you ever studied it any and all, they never meet one another. It's just as far as that way. They, as, as far as the Lord remembers your sins. That's that's how awesome this thing is. God is just good to us, church. He's good to us, and even even when we talk about the cross, when we talk about Jesus. And when he come and he was born here and the things that he done, he, he had to prove himself to humanity when he walked the face of the earth with the miracles. He didn't, um, he didn't have to do that, but he had to prove to them that he was the Messiah. And he had to die and he had to be rose up to get some people to believe. And I was just thinking this morning as I was writing all of this down, that even, even fighting the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the church, so to speak, the high priest, Cephas, and all them in the New Testament, in, in the Gospels, as he was fighting them, he even thought about the old covenant. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, amen, that when he went and, and they put him in that tomb, the Bible said he went in the lower parts and he set the captivity free. Yes. Amen, that he went back to that old covenant just to carry and made it right. That is so important that he did not forget anybody. Anybody that wants to go, anybody that wants to be cleansed, you know, that's that's the thing about the Lord. He don't forget. That's the most important thing about this church. Amen. He is just good to us. He's mighty to us. There's nothing like him. And I just want to... A lot of people don't like revelations. They don't want to talk about the end time. They don't want to talk about the things that, you know... You would think today that the church house would be full of just in the last three months of the things that's just went on that people are taking nonchalant over. But even the time that Revelation was even stripped, wrote for us, he even talked to the churches. He even sent, got John to send out letters. Warning. He that had an ear, let him hear. Yes. I know thy works. He even... He's even warned now he's warned. Yeah. It even talks about, amen, in Revelations about a lamb that was slain for us. Yeah. It talks about a marriage supper. It talks about us being the bride. He's coming back for the bride that's made yeah. herself yeah. ready. It talks about all these yeah. things that one day is going to happen. Yeah. And Brittany, it does say in here that at one time, at one, at, at, there'll come a time that some of us will see death here. <laughs> there will be some of us, Jesus said, will still be standing when the eastern sky, the eastern sky breaks over. Yes. The Bible talks about perilous times from Revelations 13 to 18. It talks about all the things that's going to happen here. Yes. But the most important thing, amen, the charge of the angels as they pour out the vials, it's the most important thing that I can <laughs> express to anybody here today. It says there's a commandment that's given to the angels. That they are not to touch those right. Amen. That, that my name is in their forehead. That's right. Amen. It says you do not touch. You can destroy anything around them, but you do not touch them. And I, I tell you, it's a blessing, amen, to serve him. It's a blessing to know, amen, that that blood has been applied, Sister Carrie, just like it was on the doorpost uh, on, in the land of Goshen when the death angel come. Right. You know, he yes. warned them that the death angel is coming, amen. The preacher today, and it don't matter what church you go to, he warns you of this time is going to be at end. He warns you of a mark of the beast. He warns you of sin. He warns you of destruction. He warns you of all things. But it's up to man to make their mind up if I'm going to serve you or not, Lord God. It's, it's up to you. And as we go down there today, I want y'all in your mindset, if there's nothing that won't turn your heart at all. I mean, here's a, guy, here's a little fella that's seven years old. It says, I'm making my mind up now. Come on. Yes, that's right. I don't want to be left behind. That's right. Amen. I 
believe that there's a heaven and hell. I believe that there's wrong and right. And I believe I need Jesus to make it. I thought about what it says in Thessalonians. It says he's coming back for a bride that made herself ready. And I think about that word made. And today, Trill is making himself ready. Yes, amen. You think about that, Rick. He's beginning to make that journey. Some may believe this and some may not believe this. Is this all right what you want to believe in it? It's, it's up to you. But I believe it, it'll be voiced in heaven the day that boy made his mind up. Yes, it will. I believe it will be spoken among heaven. Yes, it will. 